Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 15 of building a real Iron Man exosuit that makes me really strong. We've already done Mark 1 essentially, which I can walk along in just about, and I can just about move my power arm with a joystick that moves when I move. So last time we looked at a bit of a design refresh, we're going to take pieces from this suit and migrate them onto a new structure that I discussed last time, which is going to be a bit more sleek and a bit more skinny. So basically, in this episode, we're going to get most of the main leg structure made, or as much as we can. So you may remember from last time, we've got basically these concentric discs on all the joints. We've still got our parallelogram set up, but it's a bit more compressed. So let, look back on the last video, if you don't remember how this is going to work. I did a little model and everything, but basically I'm going to start making these pieces, and we're going to try and piece the legs together. So I've got a piece of plywood here, I've drawn out some of those parts, there's eight of them in total. This is actually nine millimetre ply, we've got some nine, twelve and eighteen going into it. And obviously we'll try and keep it as thin as we can. And uh, basically that should keep the legs nice and skinny. Alright, so here's a whole stack of wood. Those are all of those pieces I was making. I've also made the foot panels, those have just got screws in while the pieces glue. And so I'm going to get all these painted up and then we can cut up some steel and try to put the main structure together. Here they are, so I've painted them all black and let's cut some steel. So there's some steel in 400mm and 450mm lengths because the top of my leg is longer than the bottom and um, yeah it doesn't feel too heavy so that's pretty good. So now I need to bolt this onto my wood and I've made these 3D printed bearing blocks so we can use these as the spacers here to make sure these are parallel and then we can use a square to square up the ends to make sure everything's straight. So there are all the parts, they're pretty lightweight actually, um, obviously we've got some bolt heads coming through here, some of those might need turning round, we might need to cut them off. We could also do a countersink into the wood, cut a bigger hole in the steel and just bolt it through the single wall of the box section but for now they're just bolted through and we'll see how that goes as we build out the rest of the pieces. So here's one foot which needs to be blocked and spaced apart correctly to allow this piece to run on a bearing and we've got this extra piece here for a tie bar that runs all the way up the outside of the leg. So we just need to make sure these are square by moving these and screwing them together in the right place so we can get the legs square at the ankles. So what I've done with my bearing blocks is I've got a recess in both sides so I can put a bearing in from the front and one in from the back so that's the top bearing but if we look on the other side you can see there's a bearing poking through the wood there. I've scraped the wood a bit here drilling it out and also where I cut the heads off these so they fit in my feet so I need to touch that up. But we've basically got two bearings and that means I can push and tighten up a nut on each side and that will hold this perfectly in the middle. So we've got a bolt with a head on, then we're going to have a spacer and a washer, and then we have this part. So the spacer and the washer fit up closely to that bearing on the other side, the next bearing, and then we're going to put a nut on, and then some other bits and pieces. It's hard to see but the spacing seems just about right there so that's running on two bearings now and obviously it's braced in between the two outer parts with that bolt going all the way through. So those are my feet which look all right they look fairly well proportioned but now what happens at the knee? So at the knee we've got another bolt bolted onto the lower leg and then we've got another one of those double bearings which fits on there. 
So that makes my knee joint, but on the outside of that I need some parallel links. I've made these little brackets so that I can put some 6mm studding in, that can go on a piece on the rotary parts and this will be the tie to keep the pieces parallel. So at my knee joint I've got another hub which has got two bolts on it and that's going to fit on that way, I need to cut the bolts down a little bit and that's going to form the two parallel links of the knee, you can just about see in the distance there's two more at the ankle. So those are mounted on the inside of my hub, two face up to go to the hip and two face down to go to the ankle. On the other side we've got the double bearing thing again, so another bearing goes in there and that means this is nice and braced on that bolt. So my hub is installed on there and we've got these links here, so two go up and two go down and I just need to put some 6mm studding in there on each side to tie that to keep these parallel. Alright, so now we've got these links in, those hold the two sections parallel there as I turn them. And the next two links will go up the leg to hold the hips parallel, so that's very similar to the Mark I exosuit. So there is also going to be another tie that ties this axis to this axis, so we've got something running parallel with this to stop the legs wobbling. And that was going to be a piece of 2020 on a bracket here, and a plate onto this. But I'm actually going to put that on later when I come to build the hips because I don't know where it needs to be, or how big it needs to be, or how strong it needs to be. It may in fact be that these ties are enough to keep everything parallel. So there we are, there's my legs so far. Not too unhappy with that, I think we've got um, the joints in the right places at least. Obviously there's a few bits dangling around there that are the parallel links to come up, you can hear rattling, so that will go away when the hips are done. But um, I think that's pretty good, it's uh, not going to get much smaller than that. Obviously we've got the motors and gearboxes to add to each stage and everything to actually actuate those, but I'm pretty happy with the scale of them and the look of them. So obviously I've had to build everything twice to make both legs and it's quite labour intensive so there's no more time to build anything this week. Next time we're going to move on to the hips and the back and hopefully join the legs together, but I need to prepare for that. So obviously there's no motors in the legs which means they're all slack, so I need to hang it up. I also need to take some parts off the old suit, mainly these stainless steel tubes so we can make a very similar assembly to attach the back, which may be some of these parts or it may be other parts, and eventually we need to take all the motors off of course. So I'm actually going to spend some time stripping this down and making a hanging rig for the new suit to fit in here. Now the challenge with this is it's extremely heavy so I'm going to need to take the arm to pieces in stages before I can get the back off. I'm probably going to need to hang this up so I can take the legs off and then lower this onto the ground. So hopefully that's suspended now, I can take the legs off. This shouldn't be too heavy now, so I should be able to lift it down. And then we can use this frame to suspend the new suit when we build the body.
Well, it came down in one piece. I just need to undo the straps and then we can take the useful bits off and start building the new one. So that's the end of this episode. Next time I'm going to be building the hip assembly to join those legs together and a bit of the back so we've got most of the structure of the suit. Obviously after that we need to do some gearbox assembly and we need to look at pressure pads and we need to look at the control for it. So it's going to take a while but I'm pretty happy with the progress that I'm making. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also it's really important to note that all these projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me, all my videos early, and sneak peeks and pictures almost every day for patrons only. All right, that's all for now.